Education without application is worse than worthless. I don't know you personally, but I know two things for sure. One is, at least one of you is suffering today because of something going on in your life that you can fix. And the other thing I know is at least one of you at least has greatness in you. I believe everybody does. My life turned around when I sat in an audience of 2,300 people on J. Douglas Edwards, April 16th of 1974, said, one of you has greatness in you. Like a dummy, I'm thinking he's talking to me. I swear, I'm sitting there going, I believed him. I wonder how many other people in that audience believed him. Because if they believed him the way I did, they'd take it and go do something with it. So the next day I went, I typed out my type for young people. It's like, keyboarded my goals, made my commitments. It just changed. I would let go of the past and go forward if you need more than what you have, better than what you have. I have a good friend, a uh, big guy, huge actually, a couple ton. He lives at the Detroit Zoo. I, I live in the Detroit area. Don't hold that against me. If you're so smart, what do you live in Detroit for? I heard all of that before. I live in Detroit for the world's number one reason. My, my wife won't move. <laughs> my friend, is a full-grown elephant. And if you watch him at the zoo, all he does all day long is just stand there, rocking back and forth. You see this big pile of hay over there? You just stand there and say, boy, I wish I had me some of that. He just stands there. But you know, he wasn't always that way. When he was a little tyke, you should have seen his enthusiasm and, 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 oh. he saw that hay. He saw the water. He was wherever he wanted to be. Almost to a fault from the zookeeper's point of view. So you know what they did with my friend? They pounded a four foot stake in the ground and they tied around his ankle this hemp rope. So then he said, I want to get me some of that hay. Ow. And every time he tried, he got hurt. Give me some of that water. After a while, when they started noticing, he wasn't even trying anymore. They took the rope off, didn't need the stake anymore. But you know what the sad part is? You and I both know. My friend, anytime he wanted to, <laughs> all he would have had to do was go boom and break that rope and get whatever he wants. We're often tied up just like that. I think my biggest problem in life was the way I was raised. I was born and raised on the Lower East Side of Detroit. We were poor people. It wasn't that my dad didn't work. My dad was a milkman with Twin Pines. He was one of the best ones for 30 years, but he was an addicted gambler. He couldn't stay away from the track or the dice or the cards. We never had anything because he never won. I don't know if you know what it does to kids' self-esteem to, to, to have to uh, Duck down every time somebody knocks on the door because they're collecting something or taking something from you. Or, or, or dig in a sofa to find a quarter to run through the alley to Till's Market to buy a loaf of bread and, and a jar of gravy so five kids can eat that night. I remember a hundred of those meals growing up. We were abused. I didn't know it at the time. We didn't have Oprah. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was just because uh, I was Catholic. I don't mean just this, though my dad was that way with me and my brother and, and one of my sisters once. And, and, but my mom and dad were married 51 years, and I, 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 it took me a long time to learn they hated each other for almost my whole life. Every week, at least, we'd hear this. My dad, I'm not coming home anymore. 
Don't, don't expect me back. My mother's retort was always, I'm going to kill myself. I've heard that a thousand times. So when you grow up that way, you, you, you run the streets, you get in trouble, you, you, you don't go to school. Well, I did go to school. I spent three years in the ninth grade. And I, and, and I figured, well, that's enough. I got it now. <laughs> I went in the Navy. I got out 10 years later, roughly the same rank I went in because I got in trouble. So I'm telling you, ordinary people can accomplish extraordinary things. You need to work on the mind on a daily basis. Stay away from negative people. Nobody ever built a monument to a critic. <laughs> when you guys were building this, I'll bet you a million critics came out of the woodwork. Well, they should see this today, man, because I've been around a long time. I, this is great. <laughs> and work together. Together, we're better. In our favorite room, where Linda and I sit overlooking the lake, we've got a little statue. Cost three dollars. 40 years ago. All it says is a, a picture of a man and a woman, a head of a man and a woman, a little rubber, it's a rubber thing, real cheap, cheapest thing we got, but we'd never get rid of it. It's in our favorite room where we spend most, it says, together we can accomplish anything. You don't have it all together, but together you have it all. Certainly we want people with positive attitudes, but more important than that, let's have a common goal. Let's say, okay, here's what we're going to do. This is a common goal. I'm not going to hire three, and you're going to hire two, and I'm not. Let's, that's not our goal. Let's have a common goal. How many new people are we going to bring in? We. I was sitting in a restaurant in an airport about three weeks ago. After all the bad, I hate this negative news. Don't read the newspaper. Well, Zig says he reads the newspaper and the Bible every day because he wants to know what both sides are up to. But I was sitting in a restaurant next to a guy, and he says, what do you think we're going to do about this problem in our society? I said, man, I'm glad you said we instead of they. Because when one finger is pointing at the problem, there's three times as many pointing at the solution. And together, we can do anything. But it's not easy. I'm a Great Lakes boater for many years, and we live on uh, Lake St. Clair, where we can go to Lake Huron or Lake Erie. And I love boating. Power, I'm a power boater. But you picture this, you're in Lexington, Michigan. On the other side of Lake Huron, Bayfield, Ontario, Canada, and all your friends are there with their boats. It's going to be a weekend party. And the winds whip up. And the waves are six, seven footers. And Linda and I are sitting there. Should we, honey? Should we go? Should we try it? Should we do it? The boat's big enough. The electron, I mean, it, it's a good, it's a good sized boat, but scary. It's scary. Finally, she said, let's do it, hon. That's what I love about her. She was probably more scared than I was. She said, let's do it. Now, I love all kinds of boating. I love when Linda and I get out there in the middle of the lake and when it's calm and put on idle speed and, and uh, uh, autopilot and have a glass of wine, a little Aaron Neville maybe, or, you know, or Ricky Martin on a good day or, you know, something like that. And <laughs> we love that. But when I really get passionate about boating is when, boom, you're hitting them waves and you better know how to boat. So we shove off. And for six hours, we're, that's as fast as I go in those waves, we're, we're going, boom, boom, and I'm staring at the radar, scared to death. Linda's glaring at me like I did the weather. <laughs> Finally, we land in Bayfield, Ontario, Canada, tie up at the, at the dock. You don't walk to the Marine office. You strut. Oh, yeah. And you love when an old-timer says, boy, it looks rough out there, to be able to say, yeah, I, I just came across. <laughs> just like you award winners. You, you, you should be congratulated. And you should look at people and say, well, you know, they say, how did you do it? You know how I did it? I broke the bind for one thing. I put the affirmations in. I do the small thing. That's how I do it if you really want the truth. And they'll look at you and say, wow. What a journey that must have been. Yeah, it was scary. So I have a poem, and I'll 
close with this and prefix it with such a, such a heartfelt thank you. I hope that I get a chance to work with you guys closer. I really like what I see here, and I hope we get a chance to know each other better. Just remember, there is no thrill in easy sailing when the sky is clear and blue. There is no joy in merely doing things which anyone can do, but there is some satisfaction that is mighty sweet to take. When you've reached the destination, you were scared you might not make. Go for it, you guys. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. <laughs>